Our first entrepreneur into the den is the self-assured Stephen Reynolds. Uh, I'm excited and uh, quite happy with, with the information that I have and the position that the business is in, so I'm feeling quite confident. And there's one dragon he's got his eye on. Uh, of course, I do quite like Peter because he, he's been the longest serving dragon and um, he's, he's made some good investments in the past, but he's also missed a few opportunities as well and hopefully this won't be one that he passes up on. My name is Stephen Reynolds and I'm the Managing Director of Micro Fitness. Today, I'm looking for £100,000 for 15% equity. It can be argued that the best businesses are those that benefit society. Perhaps one that can tackle a £15.8 billion problem in the UK or one that costs the NHS £4.2 billion each year. The problem is obesity, particularly childhood obesity, yet we have no single market leader in this industry. Micro fitness is a multi-award winning fitness company for children. We deliver 21 different fitness experiences designed for ages three plus and offer our services to over 400 schools, organisations, special needs groups and councils across Scotland, ultimately seeking to become the world's leading fitness company for children. Some of these experiences include the mobile gym, scooter fitness in Zorbin, as well as more traditional ones like yoga, Zumba and martial arts. This year, we have enjoyed exceptional growth across a number of markets. Just now, we're on track for over 200,000 of sales. And one market in particular that's rapidly growing are our council contracts, where they bring us into their sports centres to organise events on a regular basis. In this market alone, we anticipate sales growing exponentially in the next 12 months, and we need your investment today in order to manage this. Your investment will go towards four key areas. The first is for a second office space in Manchester to establish a foothold in England. The second is more vans and equipment. The third is staff and the fourth is advertising and marketing. So if you're looking for a low risk investment that tackles one of the most major health epidemics of our time, then I would love to welcome you on board. Thanks for listening. I would like to invite anyone up to either try Zorbin or Archery. Absolutely. Can we get Tuka in the Zorb? No, I want to get in the Zorb. Hoping to persuade the dragons to exercise their financial muscle. Deborah, Sarah, some archery perhaps? Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. I've mm. never done archery. Is Stephen Reynolds from Stirling. This is your chance to shoot Peter without any explanation. He's asking for £100,000 in return for a 15% stake <laughs> in his kid friendly mobile fitness company. Boys, don't break Nick. Oh. Do not break Nick. Oh, Is that my you're not, you're not. <laughs> What's happened here? You're right there, Nick. That's like an anti birthing chamber. I've been reborn. <laughs> Sarah Willingham's on target. Oh, oh nailed that. Quite good, isn't it? But will Stephen score a bullseye with his investment opportunity? A lot of fun. Deborah Meaden gets the ball rolling. So, Stephen, um, you've got 400 schools and organisations. Yep. Um, are you making any money? Yeah, it's been profitable since the first year. Three years ago, our turnover was at 81,000 and we had a net of 39. The year after that, I went up to 112,000 and a 21 net. Uh, the year after that, I had to make some structural changes in the company and uh, we took a little hit in that. Uh, but thanks to those changes, we're now reaping the rewards for over 200,000 this year, as I say, uh, with 125 gross and a 45 net. So let's, talk, let's look into the future then. What does that look like going forward? Going forward next year, we're anticipating 720,000 um, with a gross of 330 and a net of 125. The year after that, we are looking at 1.2 million with a 550 gross and a 260 net. The fitness entrepreneur is forecasting healthy profits. But Stephen's prediction of a leap in turnover of half a million pounds next year is going to take some justifying to Peter Jones. Stephen, you've got a huge jump, haven't you? Which is, which is always typical when somebody comes in and pitches. Um, they're never going to be realistic and give a realistic figure. They're going to give a figure that's almost I would, unbelievable. I would stop you right there, actually, Peter. These figures are realistic, and I'll happily go on to explain that. 
We don't just operate in schools or local authorities. We operate in multiple markets successfully. But what are you going to go from 200,000 of sales to what? Uh, to 720. Amazing. Yeah, I would be disappointed if that's all we hit, if I'm being honest with you. I'm and do you believe pigs fly? Sorry? Um, they do in my world. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have, no, I have no doubt. Um, simply because of, I've spent five years um, learning and making wrong moves. And now I have what I believe is the perfect business model moving forward. Now, what we need today is investment to buy more equipment in vans and an office base. But most importantly... But, Stephen, it's got to be a lot better than that. Because you are currently turning over... is a technical term. I'm going to call it diddly squat. Okay. And you don't have the run rate to support £800,000 worth of forecasted sales. How so? You were forecasting to do 200,000. Yeah. Where's your 800,000 run rate? Um, might have missed it. It's the pending contracts that I'm talking about with the local authorities. So what contracts have you won that's going to change? Yeah. I'll show them. So what have I got here? The first two contracts that you see there are the signed ones from South Lanarkshire and North Ayrshire. The ones behind it are the ones that are pending. If we land Glasgow successfully, we're looking at half a million pounds a year with that single customer in a single market, bearing in mind we operate in multiple markets. Right. Stephen, you have no proven business model whatsoever. You've just got an agreement which you've agreed to trial. If it doesn't work, you'll have a cooling off period and nothing will happen going after it. You have no proof. This actually doesn't give you any validation of your business. Well, we've got the sales for it. I mean, we started... You haven't, because you haven't done anything with you're it. You're not looking at the sales, you're looking at a contract. The sales started in February with a pilot programme at Broadwood Stadium and North Lanarkshire Council. Uh, no, but not these two contracts. Yeah, I'll go through the story if you want to know the answers. Well, no, it'd be really important, because at the moment, I'm seeing a contract that's only just signed. Yeah. When you went to the back, you were showing me and proving to me why your business has delivered and going to deliver 800,000. Yeah. I need to know why this will prove that to me. Because we have just formalised our setup. So we went back to the councils and said, we need this agreement signed, and that's why they've just been signed. So how much business have you done with South Lanarkshire Leisure? With South Lanarkshire Leisure, they have just started, they're starting at the end of June, the start of July, their first events are. So you haven't done anything with that one? The tickets are on sale just now. Have you done anything with that one? There's a yes or no answer? Yes. So what business have you done with this? Around £4,000 of ticket sales pending for events that are about to come. Contract two with North Ayrshire. What have you done with them? Um, we're two and a half with them. Two and a half with them. Fulkirk Community Trust, how much business have you done with them and how much money have you taken? Um, we're sitting around six and a half with them. OK, so everything I have in this file, which you gave me, to demonstrate and to prove that you have a business that's going to go from 165000 to 800000 you've shown me the contracts that you've signed are giving you £13,000. In total, it's £35,000 with, with North Lanarkshire. Where's, where's the half a million pounds contract that you alluded to? Yeah, that's, that's based on solely the Glasgow one that we're about to sign. Depend and that's the one at the back? Yeah, the pending contracts. OK, so it's one at the back that actually doesn't say anything, but it's just got a yeah. photocopy of their logo. Yeah, to represent logo. what's about to be signed, Jeff. Yeah. It's just like that? Yes. Mm. Stephen, do you know what? I'm not going to be very long. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> OK. Um, I think I think you've just demonstrated to me that you're not going to go from 200 to 800,000. Anybody can do this. Uh, I don't think you have something particularly unique. You've only just signed the contracts, so I'm not even going to waste my breath or my time. I'm out. OK, thanks for your input, Peter. He was the dragon Stephen saw as his ideal investor. But an irritated Peter Jones swiftly exits the negotiations. Does the business proposition make financial sense to e-commerce mogul Nick Jenkins? Can, can I talk to you about cash flow? Because inherently, the cash flow in this is quite good. You're getting paid in advance, effectively, for these things, aren't you? We do it's 10 days after the event. OK, 10 days after, but you're paying about 30 days after to the council. Correct. And then your staff, you're probably not paying it on the day. Yeah, end of the month. So you talked about a second office in Manchester. Scratch that, you don't need it. You talked about buying vans. Scratch that. This year, rent them. You talked about staff. Well, you hire those and pay those on a daily basis. That's no cash flow issue. Deliver on these, get your £750,000 worth of turnover, and then you won't need to raise any money. Um, and for that reason, I'm out. 
Okay, thanks for your input. Another blow for Stephen, as Nick Jenkins offers advice but declines to invest. Will Tuka Suleiman or Sarah Willingham be more prepared to part with their cash? Stephen, um, I believe this is not an investment for me because I think it's too small. I think a lot of it is based on crystal ball. And I, you know, I think it's a good little business you're running, but I'm not going to invest. OK, I appreciate your time. Thank I'm you. out. Stephen, um, you've got a lot of pending stuff there. If you can prove that, you've proven the business model, it's been going for six to 12 months. You know, you can be you can ask me for money for a lot higher valuation once that's proven and you've got that revenue model set. So I'm not going to invest, but I, I, I hope you get there because I think it's a great thing for kids. I really do. Um, so good luck, but I'm afraid I'm out. Four dragons down, and after a pitch with some tetchy exchanges, it's time for a bit of straight talking from Deborah Meaden. You probably don't know, but you do come across as a little bit spiky when you're talking to investors, you know, engage with them, don't push against them, you know, because you've got five people here looking to put money into businesses. Anyway, um, expansion for you right now outside of Scotland is the wrong thing to do. Consolidate. Get these landed. OK. Do that first before you do any more, please. <laughs> OK, Deborah, thanks again for that. For me, your, your, your whole expansion plan, it's just too early. So for that reason, I'm afraid I'm out. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. So Deborah Meaden blows the final whistle on Stephen's investment hopes. He leaves the den bruised, but ready to fight another day. Didn't go as expected. Um, that was pretty rough, pretty rough. I always think it's an interesting strategy to try and pitch yourself against the dragons as opposed to engaging. I think uh, Peter took a rather aggressive approach to analysing the business. And uh, unfortunately, the, the other dragons ended up picking up on the negativity that I think I was ultimately emitting by the end of it. Hello Dragons, my name is Simon Jameson and this is Alan Brown and we're here today to ask for a £50,000 investment for a 25% stake in our business giftcardconverter.co.uk Now what would you do if I was to give you this lovely crisp £20 note? Well, you'd probably spend it or as Dragons you'd probably invest it. Now what would you do if I was to give you each a gift card? Research suggests that one of these five gift cards will go unused. We've created a business proposition that we believe solves this problem. Gift Card Converter is a marketplace that brings buyers and sellers together. Through our website, customers can buy gift cards at discounted rates, sell their unwanted cards, you can trade cards with other users, and you can also donate cards to charity. And we're the first company in the UK to offer this dedicated service. OK, so what about the market? In 2009, over £1 billion worth of gift cards were sold within the UK. Between 20 and 25% of those gift cards go unused. But that's a whopping 200 to £250 million sitting in, in wallets, purses and sock drawers around the UK. We want to help consumers spend these gift cards. With an average card value of £30 per gift card, we anticipate there's about 8 million customers within the UK. OK, and that's where uh, you chaps come in and ladies. We've, um, we need the money to ramp up our marketing efforts, which is going to focus on internet marketing via paid search and affiliate commission-based activity. Secondly, we need the cash flow to introduce a fifth element to the website where we actually buy cards directly off customers and then sell them on. We want to make Gift Card Converter the place for consumers to buy, sell, donate and trade their unwanted gift cards. Thank you for your time and if you have any questions, Please fire away. A confident pitch from marketing consultants Alan Brown and Simon Jameson. They need a £50,000 investment for their new website, 
which offers a trading platform for all those unspent gift cards. Duncan Bannatyne is intrigued. I think this is a fantastic idea. I'll tell you why. I sell gift cards and gift vouchers, and sometimes people don't use them. And it really annoys me that they've wasted the money. Yeah. And I think the opportunity for my customers to, be able to sell their gift cards on to someone else is fantastic. If you look at the States, there's um, some companies that have set up already. Uh, and obviously the gift card market in, the, in America is a lot bigger. It's a great idea, but I don't think it'll make any money. I'll tell you why. And a lot of people put them in a drawer and the intention is to use them. Yeah. And they end up not using them. Yeah. But they would never think of going to a computer to try and sell it. That's what we're trying to kind of, part of our PR would be to actually actively encourage that. But you can't. PR and actively encourage to change the way that the minds work. And I think that's the flaw. I mean, the, the, the kind of analogy that I'd take from that is, is in the same way that people, you know, a couple of years ago had mobile phones and, you know, everyone got a mobile phone every year and they, they, they kind of, again, sat in the drawer and no one kind of knew what to do with them. But now there's so many different options to, to, to actually get cash back for that phone. A sure-footed defence from the young duo. Marketing expert Deborah Meaden wants to interrogate them on their business plan. I completely disagree with Duncan. I think this is a fantastic idea. I think Sorry, it's I said it was a great idea. <laughs> well, no, Sorry. no, okay. How can you disagree? Uh, well, I, I said it's a great idea. Duncan. You said I disagree with Duncan, it's a great idea. Duncan. What the hell's going on here, Deborah? I don't, he I don't understand. Idea. Yeah, Duncan said it was a great idea and then went on to describe how it wouldn't make any money. The bit, if he'd let me finish, I would have gone on to say, I think it's a great idea and I completely understand why people would use it. I myself have thought, oh, if only I could do something with those gift vouchers. And I think it is plugged in to what people are currently doing and even more so what people are going to do in the future when they need cash. So that's the good news. Oh, I'm wait a minute, I thought there was an back. investment coming up. I am that. going to go back. No, Ooh. I think, can I say, if we get to the bottom of this, you will have an investment oh. from me, and I will tell you that right now. Can we just talk about the other side of it, which is marketing? And you talked about things like affiliate marketing, pay-per-clicks. Yes, yeah, so essentially, in, in year one, we're saying that we'll spend about £150,000. And then again, a similar spend over the three years. We're going to be paid. So what's your monthly a... burn then? Salaries, wages, None. development costs? None. So at the moment, there are no costs attached There's to this. No cost. There's Two no of cost. you working independently, not in an office. You've got no developers sitting, working no, no. on site. No, Is no. it fully developed? Yeah, yeah site's so fully developed. Everything works. Everything, all the back end's completely automated and that's what literally we've spent the last couple of months um, getting right. Alan and Simon are holding their own in the den. Peter Jones owns an experience day gift company. What will he think of their business innovation? I could not disagree more with Deborah. I actually think that Deborah's just missed it. I definitely know this market very very well because I'm in it. Yeah. You are completely disillusioned if you think that the market in the States is growing at the rate that it is. It's actually in, in massive decline. And the same would happen on launch of your product here. The non-redemption figure is less than 10% in real terms across the whole of the market. You've got to capture 50 to 60% of that non-redemption market to even have a business. And you ain't ever going to do that. Companies will start to close down the avenues of where these vouchers can be cross-traded and sold in what I would call a black market. If you're going to continue on this journey, you are not going to fail. This is going to potentially destroy you. For that reason, I'm out. OK, okay. okay. thank you very much. A disastrous analysis of the duo's business plan and a first blow to their hopes of investment. Retail giant Theo Pafitis is not looking impressed. What's the legalities of what you're doing? Well, in, in essence, the gift card in, in itself is, is, you know, tradable. Um, you know, a gift card itself, when someone purchases it, passes it on to another person. So, Is that in right? Essence, yeah. You know, in terms of conditions, some gift cards it's, don't say otherwise. Yeah, some, some we, gift cards do. Yeah. Some gift cards well, do. We, we say we're acting as the, as the middleman between the trades, and at the moment, people can buy or sell cards on yeah. eBay at the moment, so it does go on. Lots of things go on. Ticket touting, 
goes on. That's not a defence. We both worked in financial services for the last 10 or 15 years. Why does that not surprise me? OK. Well, to so say you've... So the, the... Hey, Simon, yeah. Alan. Yes. Do you get the feeling that Theo doesn't like you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think it doesn't like you? Because ultimately, the gift cards that go unused will... will, will basically is, is cash already sitting in your, your, your pocket. So, essentially, you won't want those, those to, to be spent. Under pressure from Theo Pafitis, Alan and Simon's initial confidence is starting to wane. Will James Kahn throw them the financial lifeline they badly need? There is a huge risk, if you're successful, if the retailers tighten up their terms and conditions, you're out of business. Just give me one quick question. How much have you invested so far in this? We've only put a couple of thousand pounds into it. Which is basically the, the development cost. Yeah, and also my kind of time I finish work in January. Don't. Please don't do that. <laughs> I've anyway. already done it. You've already given your notice in. <laughs> I've, I've finished in January. To OK, and what, what, were you, what were you earning in that position? Uh, I was earning up to 100k. Oh! oh. OK, just as a businessman, I'm saying, if I've got £100,000 worth of a secured salary, I give that up and take a risk, then I want to make at least 200 to compensate the risk. Because if all I make is 100 it wasn't a great deal. As the opportunities unravelled and as the issues have come out, it just makes it sound a bit too complicated in terms of, is this really going to make any money? And for those reasons, I'm out. OK, thank you. Sam, I'll, I'll tell you where I am. I wouldn't have a problem with vouchers being sold on your site. Wouldn't bother me one little bit. I wouldn't change my terms and conditions. I don't mind. It's good publicity. People are selling it. Fantastic. But I think the problem is the seller of a £50 voucher, he wants £50 for it. But it won't sell for £50. The buyer wants a bargain. So he's going to buy it for what? £30? I don't think anybody's going to sell the gift vouchers for that price. I think they'd rather just go and use the gift voucher and, and buy something with it. And so for that reason, I'm not going to invest. And so I'm out. OK. Two more dragons out, and the duo's time in the den looks like it's coming to an end. Will an initially impressed Deborah Meaden ignore her rival's concerns? So, Simon, Alan, I still maintain you have got a very good idea here, and actually something that from the customer end would work. But I want to understand hmm. the legalities of it. Yeah. Well, what we've, what we've done is, uh, within the terms and conditions that we set up, we're basically the middleman. The customer is happy to trade between no, no, two hold customers. hold on. Have you spoken to a lawyer about this? Uh, no, not at this point, no. <laughs> Right, OK, because this is a really, really key point, because suddenly this is going to get a load of attention. You're going to do everything that you want to do. There's going to be PR, there's going to be activity, everybody's going to know about it, and somebody's going to say, I'm going to stop that site, because that site's not legal. I wouldn't want to be working in that space. And for that reason, I won't be investing. OK. okay. I'm Thank out. you very much. That just leaves me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God they're all out. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting here waiting. What are the chances? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boys, 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 boys. Not all good ideas are money-making ideas. And the sooner we all start realising, the better our business people will be. So I'm afraid I'm out. OK, thanks for Bye. your time. Thanks very much for the feedback. Good luck, guys. Bye, thanks. guys. The duo got off to a good start, but the Dragons were ultimately unconvinced by their business plan. They leave with nothing. Sales in the three months running up to December the 25th, the so-called golden quarter of the year, can make or break a bottom line. Among those hoping to cash in on the annual Christmas retail rush is Manchester-based entrepreneur Josh Turner. I've always liked bright, colourful socks. I've uh, spoken all over the world in socks. So I'm looking forward to walking into Den in, in, in the socks as well. Josh might be about to face the dragons in stockinged feet, but during the festive season, at least, healthy sales of his product should be a shoe in It's a massive gifting market. We do socks for every different type of person. Oh, competition. Jones. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Can't see any stripies there.
Hello Dragons, my name's Josh and I'm the founder of Stand for Socks. We're here today seeking £60,000 for 7.5% equity in my business. 16 hours, that's the average amount of time most of us wear socks for every single day. Yet, socks are typically poorly made, dull and standardised. I spent the last three years iterating and developing the perfect socks brings together a number of feature improvements which greatly enhance the comfort and durability of the socks while not compromising on style uh, or ethics. We operate as a direct-to-consumer, scalable e-commerce model. And in the past three years, we've gone from concept to turning over 150,000 and we're on course to do over 500,000 this year. However, about more than just reinvented socks, socks are one of the most requested items by homeless people. Our model is every pair we sell, we give a pair away. That currently is a thick antibacterial pair to homeless people in the UK. Thank you, I now hand out some samples. Socks for those with a social conscience are the offering from Josh Turner, who's seeking £60,000 in return for a 7.5% share in his buy one, give one garment business. Ah, oh, the dog one. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Given that Peter Jones has a sock range of his own, is Tej Lalvani about to put his foot in it? Hi, Josh. Hi. You said that your socks are aiming to be the world's most comfortable socks. So are they more comfortable than Peter's socks? I would hope so, yes, if they're Peter's own brand. And what is your price point? We're around £10 a pair. OK. So how much does it cost you? Our cost is £4.50, delivered to customer. OK. That's quite expensive. Yeah, well, that's including the donation pair and pick and pack. So out of the £150,000 you did last year, yeah. what's your gross and net profit? Last year, um, gross was 98000 profit was 20000 net profit. 20,000. And your forecast is 500,000 pound sales this year and your gross profit? Our forecast this year is actually 600,000. OK. Our gross profit on that is 330,000 and our net profit on that is 60,000. And just finally, um, how much money have you put in the business? Started the business actually on benefits. Um, there was a scheme at the time called New Enterprise Allowance Scheme where they paid people to start companies to create jobs and everything else. And I put 3,000 pounds in of savings when I started. So your backstory, you yeah. came up with an idea and... Yeah, crazy. I've always been an entrepreneur from a young age. I'm dyslexic, I struggled at school, but I kind of thrived at, at buying and selling different business ideas and kind of snowballed from there. So talk me through your business successes in the past. Yeah, I started off washing up cars, realised I was getting paid £3 an hour. I could make more money doing my own stuff. eBay power seller at 13, 14. I started buying stuff from China, you know, headphones, anything that people kind of my age wanted, I knew how to get. Josh's entrepreneurial zeal has clearly impressed the dragons. But fashion tycoon Tuka Suleiman wants to turn the focus firmly back to footwear. Josh, um, I'm probably the most difficult person to please. OK. Because I know a little bit about socks. Yeah. Uh, when I look at the product, I don't see anything that says to me, wow. It is what I call a basic sock. Yes, it's a low entry kind of market, but there's a number of feature improvements we've made to our socks, like arch support, a seamless toe closure, reinforced heel and toe. We've got a new performance range coming out, like Pilates, sports socks, which is going far more moving the brand lifestyle position. We know about reinforcing heels, we know about designs, but you just mentioned something which sort of made me spring up. You said about lifestyle socks. Yes. If you could create a lifestyle sock business, that could be your USP. Yeah. Lifestyle branding, we've looked at this year massively. We want socks that you can wear to go for beers, but also wear for yoga or have another one where you go running. We've realised we need to target the niches. Josh's plans to offer specific socks for specific segments of the market have struck a chord with Tuka Suleiman. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to dig a little deeper into the footwear entrepreneur's numbers. So, um, last year, £150,000 turnover. Yes. 
gross profit 98. But looking forward, your gross profit reduces as a percentage. Why? So in this previous year, we, we broke that. So we factored that into our margin now. So it, when you say 600,000 turnover, that includes VAT? Uh, we get this right. 600,000 isn't... is... Um, I don't know for sure, if I'm honest, no. OK, well, that's, it's a, it is a little bit worrying that you're not sure, because if 600,000 doesn't include VAT, then you're expecting your turnover to go up to about £720,000. Yeah. Do you think that sounds realistic to you? I think the, the grounding that we've now built in the last year, that model's churning, and now we're going into email marketing and other areas. I'm confident that we will do over 600,000 this year. You need to do 720,000? Yeah. That's quite a lot over 600,000. Yeah. So you haven't got a big order sitting somewhere that we need to know about? Not just yet, no. Deborah Meaden has revealed a gaping hole in the SOC entrepreneur's financial projections, leading Peter Jones to question their overall credibility. I don't think it's possible. You can't achieve the number that you're saying without money. We've got another load of stock coming. I think the mistake I've probably made is... What's just... the value of the stock? Um, I think it's about £18,000. That's nowhere near. Six, seven hundred thousand. Yeah. It looks like to me you'll generate similar numbers to what you've generated this year, which is good, mm. but that's on the basis of the fact that you haven't got the capital to generate a higher number. Yeah. I think you've created a really nice business, and I think that this is a business that you will continue to do well with. But in terms of the opportunity, I can't see how you're going to even achieve half of the forecast you've given in the den today. So, sadly, that's not a proposition for me. I'm going to have to say I'm out. Thank you. Disappointment for the young entrepreneur as Peter Jones walks away from the deal. Has Deborah Meaden seen sufficient merit in the buy one, gift one element of Josh's business to overlook the financial issues? Josh, um, you are in the right space, thinking the right thoughts. I really like the model, but I, I, with those numbers, I can see that we're going to struggle. So I'm really sorry, Josh. I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you, Deborah. Josh, you're really credible. I think what you've done with the limited amount of money uh, to build a business from your bedroom is quite remarkable. But the issue I have is it's going to be difficult, and especially at the valuation that you've got here, to try and, and take a punt on it. It's not something for me to be part of this journey, so I'm going to say I'm out. Good luck. I've been really impressed with you. I think you're very entrepreneurial. You've got great drive and energy. But I do worry that you don't have the grasp on the numbers to have an investor on board. Now, I do love the model of the buy one, give one. I really love that angle. But it's just not quite enough to get me over the line today. Then I'm out. Four dragons down, and the SOC entrepreneur's prospects of securing an investment appear as slim as the chances of finding a matching pair on wash day. So, will a sock savvy Tuka Suleiman be prepared to buck the trend? Josh, um, you're predicting to go to 600,000 this year. Well, 720. And year to date, you've done how much? Uh, 16,000 pounds. 16. The majority of our e commerce sales happen in the three or four months before Christmas. That could be easily 200, 250,000. I think, you know, it doesn't really go that way. I think it depends how much money you spend on social media. Yes, very. Everybody's selling socks. 
So if you Google men's socks, you'll probably be at the bottom of the page because the big guys are paying a lot more money. Yeah. So you have to really spend a lot of money on social media to really acquire something. To be honest with you, the only thing good I see here today is you. You're credible. Unfortunately, your strategy is not credible. I wish you all the best, but I'm not going to invest today, and I'm out. Thanks a lot, everyone. Cheers. Josh. Sadly for Josh, he must leave the den with nothing. There was praise aplenty for the man himself. He's learnt a lot and he's yeah. figured it out. I think he probably will do well. He will survive. But when it came to parting with their cash, the sock entrepreneur's financial projections gave the Dragons decidedly cold feet. I'm very confident that we're going to hit those forecast figures this year, without a doubt. I'm going to continue to work my socks off and build this business globally. Hi, I'm Ian Taylor. My company is Media Displays. I'm here today to ask the Dragons for £80,000 for 25%. In 2004, I designed, developed and launched the first mobile digital advance. In 2009, I made the conscious decision to launch an additional product, which were TV bikes, which you see here today. They are totally non-motorised, therefore the town and city centre friendly. The bikes, as do the Digivans, have sound, and they make a really great impact. If I may just take a few seconds to just show you a few other examples of the Digivans where they're being deployed. Thank you. As you can see, the screens can be used for many, many different applications, using it for helping with recruitment for the army, and in towns and city centres, the screen in its lowest position, assisting advertisers to, and, and, in this case, a police force to get the message across. I'm here today to ask the Dragons to assist with expanding the current inventory and also introducing a, a direct sales team. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? A polished presentation from the advertising salesman. Ian Taylor needs an £80,000 investment to expand his mobile video advertising company, and in return, he's willing to give away a 25% stake in it. Theo Pafitis starts off the proceedings. Where do you operate from? Uh, I personally live in Yorkshire, and I work from a very small office, but it's functional uh, at home. We have There's had... absolutely nothing wrong with that, by the way. I've, I've read your book, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Anybody else working in the business? I have a total of six employees. I have my, my son. And what does he do? He's one of the, uh, the riders. Headless? He's 21. OK. He gets paid £7.80 an hour. And right. he gets the same as everybody else. OK. So do you get the work direct from agencies or directly from advertisers? OK. 55% of our business comes from what I'm going to call the reseller channel, which is the agency world. Do you have any direct clients? Yes, I do. Give uh, me some names. Uh, we work for councils up and down the country. We do a lot of ev event-based marketing. I work for uh, seven police forces around the country. We work for uh, six race courses. And because we want to attract national advertisers, we've broke our back trying to deliver a national service with two TV vans. Ian handles the first exchange with some aplomb. Now, James Kahn wants to focus on his company's finances. Hi, Ian. I'm James. Hi, James. Um, how much have you invested in the business? I personally invested £90,000, uh, but that went in as a director's loan. OK. And when did it start generating revenue? Yeah, just give me those numbers. Yeah, OK. The first year's revenue was 27800 Yep. The second year's revenue was 201,000. Yeah. Third year's revenue was 289,000. Yeah. The fourth year's revenue comes to 365,000. Yeah. And the last year's revenue was 352,000. Okay. And if I gave you the 80,000 pounds you're looking for, how do those numbers change? 
Those numbers changed because I would plan to do two things. I would plan to add additional inventory. I'd plan to put a new vehicle or a vehicle in the south, or maybe have one in the north and two in the south, and a sales team. And is it a daily rate you charge? Uh, the van, the gross uh, daily rate is £1,200, and the bike is £499 a day. It's if I'm a corporate customer, why would I do this rather than just spending the money on billboards that are digital? Our products allow you to take your message to your target audience when and where you choose. For example, if I may, I got a call on Monday from a, a major brand who wanted to have some advertising at Wembley on Monday evening. We were able, at 10 o'clock in the morning, to take that call and have the vehicle at Wembley for 3 o'clock in the afternoon displaying and promoting their brand. OK. It's a convincing argument from the entrepreneur. How will he fare under the scrutiny of Duncan Bannatyne? You've very eloquently given us the turnover figures, but you haven't given us the profit figures. I suspect there isn't much profit. Is that true? Um, I, I'm, I'm encouraged by the way that the business is moving. I'm, I, I think we can achieve more. You're making a loss? No, we're not. OK. Uh, it's 20,500 loss year one. OK. 40,800 loss year two. Yep. And uh, 24,400 loss year three. Yep. Year four, we achieved a profit which balanced to some extent the losses out of 78,800. And the last year's profits were 74,800. You made a profit of 74,000? Yeah, before dividends, yeah. OK. Ian, before I lose track, are you actually running profitably at the moment? We're running pretty much at break-even. But by the end of this financial year, we're on track to make a profit. So what profit do you think you're going to make? From January this year to December this year, 40,000. But you're nearly at the end of the year you're breaking even. Right. So how are you going to make profit of 40,000? The, the revenues that we generated uh, last year were no, based on... No, I'm on, not comparing uh, to last year, I'm comparing to what's happened this year. The year we're in at the moment, I don't, know if I'm, I don't think I'm being obtuse here, the year we're in at the moment, I don't get how you get to £40,000 profit. It may, it may well be that the figure of 40,000 is my goal for, to achieve. Um, do you know why stop at 40,000? Why don't you have a goal at 250,000? Your goal isn't really what I'm asking. What do you profit do you think you're going to make this year? Well, based on the information that we've just discussed and the conversation we've just had, I, it's going to look more like 25,000 as we stand here today. Are you telling me I've just done your year-end forecast? A fraught exchange and Ian's confidence takes a hit. Theo Pafitis is concerned. Ian. So have profits gone down? Yeah. Do you draw wages before that or not wages? OK. For the first four years, rather than taking salary, I withdrew my director's loan. And then from that point onwards, I've, I've now taken a salary. So what's the salary now? £64,000 a year. Um, if you had taken a salary, you'd never made a profit in all the time you've been going. I agree with you. Does that... Does it worry you? Yeah, it does. I think I stated, and I think it's fair to say, that when I started the business, fairly enthusiastically, I should have either took, bought one van and stuck with that or seek further investment at that okay, time the, the rather green, than starting the business. The green hindsight is a wonderful thing, but we just don't have that. Um, the model as you've got it at the moment doesn't work. It doesn't work, you're right. I just can't see a way that if I invested anything in you, all that we're doing is assisting you in making a living for a longer period before you run out of money again. For that reason, Ian, I'm out. Thank you. The company's potential for profit is questioned, resulting in the loss of a first dragon. And Peter Jones has made up his mind too. Ian, um, as much as you might see that this is a great opportunity, I don't have the same vision that you have for this. My personal feeling is, over several years to come, and you're seeing it now at Ascot, it, it makes sense for the actual race course themselves to put something in situ on a permanent basis because of the cost of redeploying these units. 
and I worry for you and I worry for the business and its longevity. Unfortunately, I'm out. OK, thank you, Peter. Ian, um, do you know there are some people in life who don't know how to make a profit? And people misunderstand being in business and generating revenue with this instinct that true entrepreneurs have to make money. I have a horrible feeling that you don't know how to make a profit. And you haven't shown anything here today that tells me you do. So I'm afraid for that reason, Ian, I'm out. OK, thank you. Um, Ian, revenue is turnover. Yeah. Turnover is vanity and profit is sanity. I wish you all the best of luck, Ian, but I'm sorry, I can't invest and so I'm out. Mm. Thank you. Three dragons out in quick succession. Now, James Kahn is all that stands between Ian and total failure in the den. I'm still not 100% with the business, but the more I listen to you, the more I like you. So what can you give me that's going to give me some comfort of security that I'm not going to put the 80 grand in and lose it? What's your forecast over the next 24 months? With £80,000 investment, year one, 818,000 turnover. Yeah. 1.69 million year two and 2.49 million year three. Wow, that really jumps, doesn't it? It does, and there's a, a fundamental reason why it jumps. More inventory needs to come on to hit those operating numbers. OK, so the year one number with my investment is what profit? 180,000. Do you believe in those numbers? I believe in those numbers, providing I can make the... If I get the £80,000 investment, but asking for investment one thing, I'm asking for the dragon to help me go forward. This business is my children's inheritance. I am determined to make it a success. I would like to make it a success with you, with your money and your help, but I will make this business a success. I'm determined to do that. You know, I'll tell you where I am. What I've probably been the most impressed with is, is you really are quite a... You know, you're quite a worker. You're out there, you're a fighter. And I suppose with the dragon involved, with more money, um, you just might pull it off. So I'm going to make you an offer, in. Thank you. I'm going to offer you the full amount of £80,000. I'd like to propose an equity stake of 45%. If you achieve the forecast, for each year you achieve that number, I'm happy to give you 10% back. So in year one, I'm going to drop to 35%, and the following year, you hit your second year numbers, and I will drop down to 25%. So back to where you're offering. I would like to ask if, um, would you take uh, an offer of 40% if I exceed uh, year one's target, year two ta target, and reduce it by 7.5% per year? I'm sorry, and the reason why you're doing that, Ian, is because... I'm negotiating. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I will still want 45%, mm -hmm. but I'll drop to 40% if your year end numbers achieve 40,000 profit. I'll accept your offer, thank you. Might as well as well. Ian has done it, finally convincing a dragon there's money-making potential in his business. He leaves with an influential multimillionaire on board. Ian, very well done. Did you expect to get an investment? Well, I answered all the questions honestly. I, I, I tried to give them a, a good impression of, of the business opportunity. 
Um, I think that James thought if he puts some help into this equation and some money, he can, he can turn it. If anybody can get four good salespeople to help my business, it would be James. So I think I got the right dragon in the end. Very well done, Ian. Thank you very much. Imagine if you can take, you know, two electrical wires and you touch it, sparks. It's all the time. <laughs> in here, in here, all the time. He's got so much passion and energy and sometimes I have to um, tell him, come. Really? Yes. She brings me back down to the earth. <laughs> Rupesh Thomas from Kerala in India and his Parisian wife Alex have made sure their tuk-tuk and their business both have room for a dragon or two. Ready? Yeah. Hello, dragons. My name is Rupesh, and I'm the founder of Tuk Tuk Chai. Hello, dragons. My name is Alex, and I'm the co-founder of Tuk Tuk Chai, and also Rupesh's wife. Today, we are here to pitch for a hundred thousand pounds investment in return for five percent equity. Coffee drinkers can pick up a variety of ready-to-drink iced coffees from supermarket shelves. Yet, when it comes to tea drinkers, the only option they have is iced tea that does not even contain any milk. Well, not anymore. With our chai, they can, as it's the first ready-to-drink tea with milk, and we are the pioneers who have invented and created the concept for iced milk tea. We import black tea leaves from Kerala, where I'm originally from, and we brew it in large quantities in a factory to get the authentic taste of chai. At the moment, the brewing and the filtering is manual, so we need to install a machine into the factory, which is why we are here. After our soft launch last year in March, we were listed into Harvey Nichols, and most importantly, got a listing nationally with Sainsbury's. Uh, so this is our journey so far, and we invite you, Dragons, to hop on board with us <laughs> and take Tuk Tuk Chai to another level together. Thank you. Hoping to fly with their chai are Rupesh and Alex Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Whoa. <laughs> you enjoy? They're aiming to prize £100,000 out of a dragon in return for a 5% equity stake in their ready-to-drink ice milk tea company. And their three-wheeler has already taken Deborah Meaden on a journey down memory lane. I spent many an hour backpacking around India in a tuk-tuk that looked nothing like that. That is the smartest looking tuk-tuk I've ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Thank you. what's your background? I, I come from nothing, uh, basically. I, I came from India 16 years ago, uh, just 600 pounds in my hand. And uh, yeah, I came with a uh, focus full of dreams and uh, the dreams get bigger, the hope, you know, the ambition Good. gets bigger. So yeah, here we are, in front of great people. So, I mean, you know, that's a journey in itself. Investment or not, this is a journey. So far, it sounds like a great story. How does that translate into numbers? So this year, uh, first year, we project uh, our turnover to be 105,762. What's your gross margin? Uh, the first year is negative. Why? Because it costs us, we'll make a loss on each unit sold. Oh, I wasn't expecting to stumble across that so early. I started all happy talking about the blinking tuk-tuk. Can you explain the cost price and the loss that you're making on this? How much are you selling that into Sainsbury's for? Sainsbury has specifically told us we are not allowed to talk about our cost price. You do understand that the, we're investors. I know. So you have got to reveal your cost price. You've got to. I know, Deborah. I, I don't know why they have said we cannot reveal that. I mean, that, I, I, I am. I wasn't expecting to get stuck on this quite so quickly. <sighs> sorry, I'm so sorry. It's 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 not it's not because I don't want oh. to honestly. What are you doing here? How can you possibly stand? What is that sell for? Tuka, it... Tuka. I'm having a conversation. Whoa. I want to know nothing else, but what the cost price is. We could actually lose our contract, which would mean the business closed down. 
it's not a risk if, that we if can they, take. Do we risk it? The quickest pitch. It could be the quickest pitch. This is lunacy. I've never heard in my life of a supplier being able to control the destiny of a business. They're not on your board, they don't run your company, they don't own your business. This is your life and your chance. Can I suggest you go to the back of the room and have a conversation with your wife and you decide when you come back whether you want to talk properly about this business. Otherwise, you're going to be on your tuk-tuk, back in the lift very quickly. Yes, of course. Can they can they cut us because of that? Rubbish, can they cut us? Uh, they haven't said they've cut us, they've put it in bold. Factory, factory, if I can do I can I can just factory. But uh What do we do? You you call. I will go what you say. So, Rupesh and Alex, have you made a decision? Uh, yes, it's a big risk, but uh, she's. I go by what her gut call is. Yeah, say uh, one pound. Sorry, what's that? One pound? We sell to Sainsbury's. And it costs you how much to make? Uh, one pound and three pence. Rupesh, we got there. <laughs> I know. Well, Rupesh, you're the first person that I've ever seen go into retail selling a product cheaper than it's costing you to make. Why did you do that? Because uh, it, the time it took to perfect that recipe, because we could take shortcuts, do use flavorings, use extracts, but it's not the real thing. So the development process took us two years to develop. But Rupesh, look, I mean, in business you take risk, yeah, but you don't gamble. So what you're doing is gambling. Right now, if you don't get investment, you're going to go bust. Assuming mm -hmm. that you're lucky today, yep. <clears throat> and you get a dragon to invest in you, yep. and you install the new machine, what will it cost you then? Once the machine goes in, per unit, yep. it'll be 55 pence. But it takes about six months to get it installed. So how much will you lose in the next six months before the machine is installed? 11,000 pounds. So you've come into the den, you're valuing the business at two million pounds. You might install a machine, please God, when you've got the investment in six months' time. In the meantime, for every product you sell, you'll still lose money. I think all I can help you is just keep on putting my hands in my pocket because you're going to need more and more and more money. So unfortunately, I'm not going to invest on your journey and I'm out. The good news is, it's really nice. Thank you. I Thank you, really like it. Thank you, and I completely disagree with Tej. I like your strategy. Oh, I don't know how I've many actually have, well, that retail I don't, that I'm way, not asking what you think. When I advise, and I have advised people to do exactly that thing, which is, you know you can sell it a pound, sell it, prove it, and the next run we make our money, you've got absolutely no issue. So I like that thinking. And I really, really like you guys. I really like you guys, because you've got an awful lot of stuff right. There is a but. For me, the biggest issue is that you're going to have to raise more funds. You're trying to enter new market, which means you're going to have to do a lot of promotions. And that's what starts driving your margin down. So you're not at the stage in the business where I personally would feel confident enough to back it. So I won't be investing. I'm out. Deborah Meaden rates the product, but not its prospects, and ends her interest. Jenny Campbell has been sitting quietly. Does the banking queen buy into the chai business? The, the product's lovely, yeah. But for me, your journey is too long to success and that's too much risk for me to think about putting £100,000 into a business for only 5%. I wish you all the best and I'm out. Um, I love your enthusiasm, both of you. It's, it's fantastic. You. And it's, it's really important to have dreams. And you've got this amazing drive 
that you really want to make it. Um, and I actually love the name, Tuk Tuk Chai. It's very, very catchy. She came up with it. brilliant. Really, really good. And I would love to work with you guys. But I have one concern. And that's the high sugar content. This includes natural sugar as well from the milk, because milk has got natural sugar in it. So that's why also it's a tiny bit high. The taste is nice, but I feel that today's market, people want something less sugar, more healthier. So I'm going to say, I'm out. Tej Lalvani decides the chai offering isn't his cup of tea. The tuk-tuk business is stalling and only Peter Jones remains. He's already sent the entrepreneurs to the wall once. Has he seen anything to warrant a second visit? I tasted this and I was shocked. Good, bad, be Really good. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Peter. <laughs> thank you. Really, really good. However, you're going to need a lot of money to have a chance of this brand even making it. Working capital, yes. And I'm really, I'm very concerned for you. And whilst it will be lovely to be part of that journey, I have to go with my business head. So, Rupesh, Alex, it's been wonderful to meet you. I think you've been fantastic. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. That's, that's lovely to hear. And I'm going to make you an offer for all of the money, £100,000. But I want 33 and a third percent of the company. Do you want to have a sword, yes. the chat at the back? The chat. <laughs> the Thank chat. You. I think we should go for it. I think we should go for it. Having arrived in the UK with 600 quid in his pocket, Rupesh now has an offer of £100,000 to consider with his wife, Alex. If he can do to us what he did for me, if I was me. Well, we don't know that. But Peter Jones's audacious demand of a third of their company in return is nearly seven times the 5% equity stake that the pair are offering. It's a big chunk. A massive a Will they accept an equal partner or decline the deal? Well, she's make me do this. Oh, all right, Peter, fine, let's do it. You want to do it? Hey. Right, let's do it. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Really pleased. <laughs> The entrepreneurs accept Peter Jones's terms and get the £100,000 they were seeking. And they leave the den as a tuk-tuk trio. Do you want to drive to there? Oh, yeah, it's come, it's come, it's come. It's not in gear. Well, almost. Got the dragon we wanted. It's 11 out of 10. You can't get any better than that, right? That's it. Oh, it's in gear now. Yeah. Oh. I hope our business will go better than the way we're driving this. <laughs> yeah, we hope so too. Bye. Oh, God. <laughs> Crazy. Are we in? I definitely need to give him some course on the Tuk Tuk Dragon for sure. That'll be very strict. I'll be the Tuk Tuk Dragon then. <laughs> right. It's one dragon well, down. One dragon. Let's take his chair away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there were four. Yeah. Actually, I quite miss Peter. Right. Next stop, Sainsbury's. <laughs> <laughs> OK, stop it. Break, break, break. Ooh.